I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about the power of your silence. You know, Margaret, we talk a lot about no contact and not reaching out to people after somebody's broken up with you. Mm -hmm. And we know that suggesting that to you is a really scary decision. You know, because everything inside of us wants to feel connected to that person. Right. The last thing we want to do is give that person up and stop reaching out, stop trying to repair it. Right. But there's a reason why we tell you not to reach out. Right. Okay. We're going to talk about this today because believe it or not, not reaching out gives you a lot of power in this situation. Right. It doesn't feel like it. It's scary as hell to do, but it really does give the dumpy power back. That's right. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk about this today, okay? So you hear no contact all over breakup world. Don't reach out for 30 days and then reach out or reach out on day 45 or send them a clean slate message and in our we'll write experience, write them an accountability letter. Accountability letter, yeah. yeah. In our experience, that's not the most powerful thing to do. Margaret and I have spent years trying to understand mental health and attachment. Yep. And one of the things that we really believe is that our mental health really has to do with our ability to attach and our attachment to our caregivers in our early childhood. Right. Margaret, maybe you could talk about how that really has an impact on our mental health. Well, okay. Because um, I remember years ago arguing with you, yes. saying, yes, how could something that. that happened to you when you were a baby or two or three years old impact how you are today? And everyone says that. And yeah. It's a very, very valid question. And we've all spent years um, since the 1700s trying to figure this all out. <laughs> Um, but the bottom line is we are wired to attach. Mm -hmm. And literally, remember, we lived in tribes and communities because it was the only way you could stay alive. You couldn't watch out for all the saber-toothed tigers by yourself. And it seems that the happiest and healthiest human beings have a good relationship. I don't care who they're with. But people who have a good relationship and feel loved tend to do better, tend to grow more, tend to learn more. So that if we have our affectional needs met, then we tend to live a healthy life. And what we've discovered, and we've talked about some of that, some of what we learned, we began to learn after World War II, when we watched children trying to survive the bombing in London. And the bottom line was, as long as the kids were with their parents, they didn't care what horrible things happened. But if they weren't for even a minute, then they would fall apart. Okay, And then Bowlby came along and said it's possible to die of loneliness from having observed children in hospitals. Okay, That he literally saw kids die of loneliness, of not being loved. So what we learn about love, we learn in the first three years of our lives. Okay, Either it's consistent and it's there for us and we feel loved, or it's not, and we feel sad and disappointed and angry. And terrified. And terrified, right. Because human beings feel safe by bonding with other people. Right. you right, like animals yep. have yep. claws or shells, or they can fly away, or whatever defense mechanism they have. But human beings don't have those things. What we have is our bond and our connection to other right, people. because we are totally helpless when we come into the world. And when you're totally helpless, it makes a big difference how well you're taken care of. 
okay? And remember, if we got separated from our mother back in the cave days, that we ended up as somebody's lunch, okay? So we're born to live in groups, to be connected, to enjoy other people. And if we grew up in a family that had difficulties, and all kinds of different difficulties can happen through no one's fault, wars, displacements, COVID, all kinds of things can happen. Um, but if we don't come into adulthood with that basic sense of safety, it's very difficult to establish a relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, If you grew up in a family where um, nobody communicated, or if you did try to communicate, you got in trouble, or where parents said, you can't ask for anything, we're poor, who do you think you are, blah, 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 all those things, um, directly affect how we approach loving in adulthood. Okay, yep. And many, many trauma survivors can't tell if a partner is abusive because they grew up in a family where the people who loved you hurt you. Okay. Okay. So we have to come up with some sign, I think they call it a working model, or some kind of a blueprint of what we think love's lo love looks like. Yeah. And it may not be what happened in our family, happened in everybody else's family. And why are we telling you this? Okay, what does that have to do with the power of your silence? As Margaret is explaining mental health and bonding and attaching to other yeah. people, what you have to understand is that a huge part of that bond is our connection. And how do we connect? Through communication, right? right? So what we're telling you is that when your ex still feels like they can connect with you and you know that you're still going to reach out to them you're still going to make an effort to have that connection they don't feel the loss of that connection because you're reaching out so every time you reach out and make a bid to connect with them they know ultimately they are still safe to connect with you right mm -hmm. But when you stop reaching out, that's when they start to experience the loss of that connection. They feel disconnected too, they feel sad too, they also grieve. And it sets off separation anxiety mm -hmm. in them. Because now the bond with you, they feel almost like they've been dumped. Mm -hmm. But if you send somebody a letter, it doesn't make them feel the loss, right? If you send them a clean slate message, accountability letter, good reminder text, all of those things are a bid to connect with that person. And so they still don't feel the loss. Exactly right, well put, well put. So you actually give yourself a lot of power when you stop reaching out. And they, at some point, when they feel more uh, space from you, distance, disconnection from you, that's when they start to wonder, have I made a mistake? Mm -hmm. Are they going to move on? Am I going to lose them? And their anxiety goes up and they start to desperately wonder about you, think about you and catastrophize. What if you're with somebody else? What if you go off into the sunset with that person? Um, you know, I can't even imagine that in my head. It still upsets me, they mm -hmm. say. So even though a lot of times your ex will even say things like, I want you to move on. I want you to date other people. No, you need to go. And I'll help. I had somebody this week say, I'll help you with your dating profile. Well, guess what? If you actually allow that to happen, and I'm not suggesting you should, but the, when they see that you actually have done that, it's very deal, different than the idea of them telling you to do it. And then suddenly they feel abandoned. That's right. And that is when the dynamic often changes. changes. Right. Okay? Because now they're really going to revisit things and really rethink about things. Now, one of the things that I get frustrated with you guys at is that when... And uh, it's because... During a long part of the breakup, there are very long periods where your ex shows little to no interest. Right. And in that time, many of you guys, your interest in truly changing and doing the work drops. So in other words, if you think your ex has a 
somewhat high interest, you're motivated. If you think there's none, you give up. But that's not the way that it works, right? Margaret, how many times does it look like you'll never hear from that person again, six months, a year later, whatever, they reach they, out? They do hear from them. And I know it's difficult to believe. And I think right after the breakup, you're blindsided, you're upset, you're in a state of despair. And one of us comes along and says, well, you never know any time in the next six months. What do you mean, six months? Um, something could happen, but don't despair too soon. So what I'm trying to get you to see is that you want to stay motivated regardless of your ex's interest level. Right. Because it, they may show zero interest for three, four, or five months. Mm -hmm. I've had exes come back for years. And I'm not telling you to put your life on hold for no, years. No, you can't do that. No. But what we want you to do is stay motivated enough that you change your life. And regardless what happens, either they come back or you meet somebody new that blows you away. One of those things is likely to happen, and if you really do the work, it makes a massive difference on either reconnecting with your ex or the new people. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, and you know, you think, well, why, why should I work at this? They're never coming back. But it's for you, and you will continue to keep the gift you give yourself in yep. this relationship or another one. You know, Margaret, um, I see what discourages a lot of people is the exes, your exes, often become ice cold. Right. Right? At the time of the breakup. Yeah. And it's happened to me before. Yeah. I know. I was like, when it happens, it's like, who is this person? Right. It doesn't feel like the same person anymore. And, and you're completely shocked and you just think that it's going to stay that way forever. But like I've told you guys in the, about the Applebee's girl, we wound up meeting up several months later. That's when I was at Applebee's making all the mistakes because I didn't realize how to act in these situations. There were not coaches like what we do on the internet all those years ago. You would have called them right away. Exactly. Yes. Exactly, because I would have wanted to know what the heck do I do? Yeah. And so even though Margaret and I talked about a lot of those things, we didn't understand the break breakups the way we do now. No, absolutely not. You know? Mm -hmm. And so what I want you to understand is that you may feel like you're not doing anything being in no contact, right? That you think that reaching out and handwritten letters and all these things are going to get your ex interested again. And we're telling you, there's nothing more powerful than anxiety and a connection, yep. right? Yep. And that separation anxiety is far more likely going to get your ex to reach out and to miss you. And that's what you want. It gives you real power to stay silent and to leave them alone. And also, because you have absolutely no idea, unless there's an ubiquitous third party or a bunch of common friends, you have no idea what's going on with this person. But more importantly, they don't have any idea what's going on with you. So they're free to fantasize and they will come up with some ugly scenarios. I know she met Mr. Wright 20 minutes you know, later and mm -hmm. I know she's gone off in the sunset and she's happy and she's forgotten all about me and you know, all those things happen. Mm -hmm. So silence leaves people to their imagination. Just like it does for you, right. it does it for them too. Right. It's just at a different time frame, at different right. speed. Right. Right? Because in the beginning, the dumper seems to have all the power. They feel like they made the decision, it was in their hands, they can control it. And when you're trying to manipulate them back or beg and plead and all those things, they really do have the power. Yep. In a sense. Yep. Because you're, you're giving it to they them. They do. And I've had a couple of people in the last few weeks say that to me. Wait mm -hmm. a minute, they have all the power. Right. Not what you want. Mm hmm. But. Well, won't they forget about me if I stay in no contact? They're going to think I never loved them. That's a great point. That's what they say. Um, so so if, if I don't contact her, she's just going to forget all about me. Uh, probably not. That's not how attachment works. No. You just don't forget about people that you, you love. Right. It no, you just don't. You doesn't. You can't. You try, but you can't. You really can't. And even if they find somebody new and they wind up in a rebound relationship, most of the time, probably at least 90% of the time, that rebound relationship doesn't last. Doesn't work. Right. Yeah. And so you don't need to worry about the new person so much because many times it falls apart after not so long and guess who they think of after it falls apart. Right.
you. But it's hard to tell somebody that who's hysterical. I know he or she is talking to other people and yep. But we've seen it so many times that we know these things. We, we've studied it. We've looked at it. We've talked about it again and right. again. Right. And we always tell you to do or recommend to do what we would do in that situation. Right? So we wouldn't, I would never tell you to do something I wouldn't do. And so when you guys tell me, what should I do? I say, well, this is what I would do yep. if I was you. If I woke up in your shoes tomorrow, this is how I would do things. Because I've seen those patterns, right? That's right. Over and That's over right. again. And reaching out just gives people a fix and makes their anxiety better. You don't want to make them feel better during yep. this process. You want them to sit with the consequences of their decision. That's right. And Margaret's putting it nicely. Yes, but, I am. But you really do. They made this decision. To, to throw you out of their life, I've been known to say. <laughs> yeah. Like trash. Like trash. No, we're not no, going to say, say that. that. We're not going to say that. <laughs> but they have. They've, they've said, I don't want you in my life anymore. Yeah. Okay. Now, they may have had valid reasons. Maybe you were neglectful. Maybe yeah. you didn't do things that they needed. Maybe you didn't align in certain ways. You know, it's not necessarily... Um, they didn't have valid reasons for ending the relationship, right. right? You have to evaluate those things. But, you know, you want them to sit with their consequence, which is they've chosen not to have you in their life. And sometimes they'll try and change the terms and say, I want friendship. But I think that if you're going to be a platonic friend, you're going to be miserable. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, you're going to make yourself crazy. And there are other coaches that will say, oh, stay friends with them. You should at be friends with them. At least then you have some contact, yeah. But no, you, you weren't friends, and you can't be friends if you've been lovers for any length of time. Yeah, and I don't think it's authentic. No, I don't think Because it's you're true. pretending to be something you really don't and want. And often, one partner wants to change the, the relationship because if you're yeah. friends, you have much less obligation to that person than if you're in a romantic relationship. Yeah. So it's how can I keep you in my life and not have to commit to doing too much for you. Yeah. Now sometimes, and in many cases, if your ex does reach out, it's because, you know, they'll do something like an indirect direct and they're, they're not sure. Part of them wants to be with you again, part of them doesn't. Some people, some coaches will say you should ignore your ex. We're not, we're not about that. No. Because, Margaret and I think like, well, how are you supposed to repair it yeah. if you're ignoring the yeah. person? Now, if you're still angry, say that, you know. And if they're breadcrumbing you, that's a different that's situation. A different yeah. But what we're talking about is many times you guys haven't heard from them for three or four months and they make a bid to connect with you. Right. And they're scared too. remember, because in that silence, they started to wonder. Do you want to talk to them? Are you mad at them? Will you ever talk to them again? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, they start to wonder those things too. Yeah, they do. And that's the glory of the silence. It gives the imagination a lot of latitude. Usually what you fantasize is worse than what the reality is. The catastrophizing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you won't, you'll do it yourself, right? When you've been broken up with. Sure. You know, I've been in that situation. I did it. Yeah. But at, as time goes by, they can do it too. Yeah. And that's hard to understand when you're on the other end of it. But believe it or not, they can do those things too. And you know what's interesting, Margaret? A lot of times when an ex comes back, they will kind of act like the breakup never happened. Oh, all the time. Um, oh, all the time. And avoiding people have an especially common habit of doing that. So how are you doing today? Well, I haven't talked to you for three months. In yeah. fact, I have a presentation here that's going to address that a little bit. Yeah. So my point is, is that feelings can change really quickly. Yes, they can. And when they do come back into your life again, you really want to put yourself in the position to blow them away with, with the personal growth, the changes that you've made, the insights that you've gained, learning, educating yourself about attachment theory, mental health, how to communicate better, working through your own issues, and learning how to behave as an attractive partner. Right. So you do all those things, they come back and they're like, who is this person? Oh my gosh, I don't want to miss out on this person. Right, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And if you've been neglectful, or you did things in the relationship that you are maybe disappointed in, or ashamed of, or wish you could change, 
then you have the opportunity to fix it and see if you can have something healthy. Right. right. So know. all is not lost. Yep. Although it may feel like it. So believe me, when we tell you to stop reaching out, okay, we are speaking from experience in seeing what dumpers go through. We get dumpers doing calls with us all the time. Why? Because at some point they are in the dumpies position of thinking, oh my gosh, what have, I I what have I done? I shouldn't have let this person go. I realize how much I love yeah. them, how much I care about them, but it takes time to get there. Mm -hmm. What do you mean six months? Yeah, I know. And you know, on the face of it, you want this person back, so we're telling you not to contact them. On the face of it, that doesn't look like it makes any sense at all, which is why we keep explaining it over and over again. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Uh, because we see what works. And a lot of what you have to do during a breakup is very counterintuitive to what you want to do. Yes, you always use that word very well. It's <laughs> counterintuitive. Yes, yeah, stay away from them in order to get them back. Yeah, sure. What, what sense does that make? I know. It could be tempting when somebody's saying, send a good reminder text or a clean slate message. But look in the comment sections on how many people that say, I did it, and they didn't respond. Right. They ignored it. The other thing to remember is that we have a logical mind and an emotional part too. And love is not always logical. In fact, I think people have written songs about that for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So you have to think with your head and you have to think with your heart as well. We know it's challenging. Yes. And that's why we do coaching because all the calls are so different in any given day. There are so many different differences in the breakup and who broke up with who and why and yep. what was going on yep. and trying to evaluate all those things. So we understand and we understand why you're scared and why you're confused. And why you think we're crazy. <laughs> but, you know, that's why we're here to do coaching with us, of course. And, you know, just understand that if you're in no contact, there is real power in being silent. Now, as I say all the time, not all of you will have a chance to get your ex back. It's simply not the way that it works. We would never tell you that. But what we do tell you is what we see works the most. Right. Right? And obviously in a general video, it's a lot different than when we're doing a one-on-one -on -one with you. So hopefully this is helping you understand why part of the reasons why we suggest not reaching out to your ex if they've broken up with you. Right. Okay. All right. So if you want to get our help personally, you can go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, please sign up. Margaret is always helpful too. So just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.